today I've got something quite interesting to show you. Now, just before I begin, I'm going to be asked, what are you drinking? Now, I assure you, this is not poster paint brush water. This is a Japanese matcha tea. And it's delicious. So, I was saying I have something to show you. And it is an Akon Prada. Or as later renamed, the BBC Micro. Now, to those of you who didn't grow up with this, who don't even know it or recognize it, this is an 8-bit microcomputer by Acorn. And yes, I have watched Microman more times than I care to admit. Definitely more than five times, I'd say. <laughs> it's an addictive movie. Now, this was in competition with uh, Sinclair, and uh, it's quite an interesting story, actually. Uh, I do highly recommend Microman. I will link it in the description below. Uh, I think I need to watch it again with uh, my friends this time. Now, this one in particular was very kindly donated to me by a computer collector, James O'Hara, uh, and uh, he had one spare around the house, so he thought, you know, why not? you know donated to me so i thank you very much for this this is quite amazing i used to actually have one at one point uh, my brother bought one home the entire set he found it somewhere and um it had not just this it had the disk drive the screen the monitor and you know the whole set basically and <laughs> it just was left in the attic when we moved I don't know why it just escaped my mind and not to take it with me, but it was just uh, one of my regrets. <laughs> one of my few regrets in the past, actually. Now let's have a good look at this and explore. So what ports does it have? Firstly, let's take a look at the back. This thing is fairly heavy. Okay, I do not wish to knock my tea over, so I'll go there not be a good idea it does need quite some restoring you know i think it's been in an attic or something like this for quite a while now let's take a look at the ports here uh, it's got quite a few ports this computer it's it's quite a serious thing it's not like a home games computer or anything like this so you have the uhf out which is the rf out you have a video coaxial out so you can connect this to you know a pvm um, I'm figuring that's going to be a composite signal. Uh, you have the RGB out. Again, you can connect it to a monitor, PVM, or SCART. Uh, RS-232, which is the serial connection. Cassette adapter. Yes, this takes cassettes. Now here you have the analog in port, which basically is the controllers, uh, the joysticks. Yes, the BBC had analog proprietary joysticks. So yeah, you cannot, uh, you cannot normally connect the DB9 digital joysticks here, unfortunately, they're proprietary, so, but you can these days get interfaces which allow you to connect DB9, the standard DB9 joysticks, or you can even, you know, call it a project and build your own. Now these two, they seem to be other ports. This one is eConnect. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what that is. It seems like a network thing, but there's no ports that exist there. Maybe there was, they were in the model A or maybe the B plus. This is the model B, by the way. You know, the way the, the cable and everything is, it just reminds me of a freaking washing machine or something like this. Something, you know. Now this thing here was built solid. It's a little heavy, actually. It's. It was built like a freaking tank. I mean, it was aimed at the education market, so yeah, it's gonna have to resist kids freaking bashing at it, headbutting it, and I don't know, probably sitting on it or something like this. I mean, not that. I mean, if if you have a school where the kids sit on computers, something's up with that school. But anyway, let's move on. There's ports underneath here. So we haven't finished with the ports. There are ports underneath here also. Let's just take this out. I blue tacked it down. So this thing James kindly included for me. Uh, it's a BBC Micro MMC interface, and uh, yeah, it is um, basically SD card. You can you know fill up this SD card with uh, BBC Micro games and programs so forth, and it connects to the user port. So you can you know just load games from the directly from the SD card. So let's have a look at the ports at the back here. Now I'm not too familiar with the BBC Micro. I you know, I didn't use them in much back in the day, just every now and then in uh, school. This is a tube R port. I have no idea what that is. Um, anyone does, please comment below. Uh, this is one megahertz bus. This, 
been some serious things, these ports. This is the user port, which is the SD, uh, the MMC, sorry, uh, connected to. There's a printer port here. There's a disk drive port here. Now there's an auxiliary power port here, which has plus 12 volts, plus 5 volts, and minus 5 volts. So this must be for disk drives or any external peripherals, things like this. So I think you know what we're going to do here now is open this up and take a look inside Explore. So these screws here, I just tried to undo one of them and it seemed to, you know, dislodge the power supply. They're power supply screws, so let's not undo them. I've got a feeling it might just be like a few screws at the front and a clip at the back, just like the Commodore 64. Okay, so I think my guess was right here. It was just this screw, this screw, and there's going to be clips at the back. So let's just turn this around. Okay, let's not force this. Okay, I get the feeling it's these two screws. I didn't want to force it and I couldn't unclip that. It's just the, the bigger, beefier looking screws. That's all. Okay, let's have another go. Yep, just those four screws. Fantastic. Wow, it's dusty in here. The keyboard is bolted on by those two screws, which I was hesitating to. Yep. Those two screws I was hesitating to kind of take off. So let's undo this and some beautiful old school LEDs there. The actual original ones giving me the fuzzies because it just reminds me when I see LEDs like this, it reminds me of the 80s, 80s electronics. <laughs> now there seems to be quite a lot going on here. So let me just find my way around here because I've never been inside a BBC Micro before. These obviously look like ROMs, you know, and there seems to be a Disk Doctor custom ROMs that have been done here, um, which is pretty cool. Oh, we located the 6502 processor. Okay, so the, the uh, Proton or the BBC Micro with its 6502 processor is, of course, pre-ARM. ARM as in Acorn Risk Machine or Advanced Risk Machine, which was later named to. Now the 6502 CPU there is the same one that you will find in the Atari 8-bit computers. Or you'll find the 6502 or its variants in other systems like the Apple II as well as Atari Lynx, even an Atari 2600. Now the Commodore 64 over there, which does have a 6510 processor, which basically it's just another variant of it. I think it's like a few extra bits added on. It's like an updated version or something like this. But essentially on the core, it's the same thing. All these computers do use the 6502 processor. Okay, for those of you who are vaguely aware of um, you know, BBC Micro or even Acon computers, you'll have heard the term ARM CPU because it's what we use in our everyday phones and mobile devices, Raspberry Pi, so forth. You know, pretty much everywhere now. Now ARM is uh, basically it's an abbreviation inside an abbreviation here. <laughs> so you will, it's like Acorn um, Risk Machine. Now RISC is R-I-S-C, so that's um, <laughs> that stands for Reduced Instruction Set Computing. So yeah, abbreviation inside abbreviation gets a bit confusing to get your head around it. I'm not going to go deeply into it, but just touch it on the surface. Now as I said, the Proton or BBC Micro is pre-ARM. It's got a 6502 processor. But the next one in line was the Archimedes. Now that is when ARM started. Now the development of ARM started in 1983. This, you know, is from 1981. So let's go find the sound chip in here because those of you who know me will already know that I get excited about the sound aspect of every microcomputer or every vintage computer. Now there are so many SNICs here, and uh, it's amongst one of them. <laughs> Basically the sound chip is a Texas Instruments SN76489, which I believe it is... Oh, there it is. Here. <laughs> Just right in front of me. <laughs> here we go. There he is, all snuggled up in the corner here. The SN76489. Now this dude here is a DCSG as in Digital Complex Sound Generator. It's a four channel sound chip, which means three square wave tone generators and one noise generator. 
and it's actually comparable to the AY chip, which you'll find in you know other systems like the MSX, the CPC, the Amstrad CPC, the Vectrex, and things like the Master System, the Sega Master System, you know, so forth. Uh, and also, not to mention the um, the Sinclair Static freaking Pulse Track. There we go. Now, when you start looking into these computers past the surface into a little bit more depth, you will start to realize that, you know, they have certain things in common with one another. Like, for example, this has got the same CPU, more or less, as the Atari 800 and the Commodore 64, yet it's got a sound chip that is comparable to the Spectrum 128K AY chip. So, you know, there's quirks about it, and it's actually what makes them similar yet unique at the same time which is you know why it's hard to kind of get involved with these wars now for me personally you know because there used to be like you know Sinclair uh, Spectrum against Commodore 64 which to be honest I find ridiculous now because they're two completely different computers the Spectrum has its charm which the Commodore 64 cannot match yet the Commodore 64 has its charm which the Spectrum cannot match and the same with the Atari 800 you can't I just cannot compare any of these anymore more, even though I do have my favorites for other reasons. You know, the Commodore 64 is my favorite because of the SID chip. I love it. And then after that, the Atari 800 because of the Pocky. I love that. And at times, the Sinclair AY sounds amazing too, which is kind of surprising to me. Especially the Castlevania track. Of course, I know the rivalry between Acorn Computers and Sinclair, because um, Chris Curry, used to, the founder of Acorn, actually used to work for uh, Clive Sinclair. And uh, yeah, they had um, a bit of a disagreement, and just before the Sinclair Computers came up, had a disagreement, and Chris Curry, along with Herman Hauser, decided to start Acorn Computers, and yeah, create their own computer line, and then they became rivals. So yeah, there was a bit of war going on between them, but hey, they're friends now, <laughs> after all this. So going further into the ProDan, or the BPC Micro, we look into the memory. Now this is the Model B, which has 32K of memory. Now that is less than all three of the Commodore 64, the Spectrum, and the Atari 800. Well, actually, the Atari 800 normally has 16K, but, you know, has got an upgrade to um, 48K. Now the BBC Model A has 16K, then you get the Model B+, Plus, which has 64K, and then the BBC Master, which has uh, 128K, just like the Tostrack, and the Commodore 128. Actually, side note, it's such a shame that the Commodore 128 didn't take off. I'd have actually loved to see games using the full 128K on that thing, but, you know, unfortunately, there's nothing except Geos. Now the graphics on the BBC Micro actually remind me of Teletext, if you know that. Even though it's just eight colors and, you know, other computers can also do that, there is just a certain distinguishable look and feel to it, which I just can't quite put my finger on it. By the way, there is a reason why I'm not turning this on. And the reason is this dude here, <laughs> the power supply. Now, this is a bit of a ticking time bomb. It's notorious on Model B's, well, on any BBC Micros to explode when you turn it on. And that is because of the capacitor. Now, they will need to be re this will need to be recapped, the capacitors that are inside here. So I will need to do that first. I mean, I have turned it on and it's fine. I've used it, tested it, so forth. However, I don't want to turn it on again until I, you know, recap this. I still also need to recap this. There's not much to recap. There's only like a few capacitors there. But I will recap those also, maybe a little later on, but this is way more urgent. And I already have the capacitor kit here. It's only three capacitors, actually. Just three little capacitors that you gotta, you know, replace in there and it should be safe to actually switch on. <laughs> because, you know, I don't want, I don't want to experience a big bang now. <laughs> So I think I'm going to call it a day or a night for now and the next part I will start the restoration on the BBC Micro so do stick around for that. I hope you enjoyed uh, today's video. Thanks so much for your likes, your shares. Do leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to check out my other videos and do subscribe for more and also don't forget to hit that bell icon. 
Also, I wish to say a big thank you to my patrons. And if you wish to view their channels and websites, the links are in the description below. For now, I will say adios. Thank you.